Hi and welcome back to the Learning FreeCAD for Beginners series. We're on part five, where we're teaching the fundamentals of FreeCAD using practical examples and exploring workflows. In the previous lesson, we looked at tracing. In this lesson, we're gonna carry on with tracing, but we're gonna be doing a project over two videos. In the first video, we're gonna trace a part in the sketcher using a part design workflow. We're gonna create a model from a number of images. These will be used as a tracing reference. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the workflow through the part design where we'll create a sketch of one of the features using the part design and the image workbench. And we're gonna be looking at a repeating feature. So we've got a feature in there that will save time by repeating the feature around a circular path. This will be known as a polar pattern. The result will be a sketch of part of this feature. And as you can see, it's been repeated four times to create the finished part. We'll be later using that in the end result to create this model. So I hope you've enjoyed your journey so far and let's have a look at how we'll do this. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So we're in FreeCAD, we'll create a new document, and we'll jump over to the image workbench. From here, we can import the image using the create an image plane. And we'll just locate the image. And we'll import it. This is the top image, so it'll be looking down on the top. So I'm going for the XY plane and that will import the image and we'll just rotate our view so it's in front of us and click top. We're looking straight down on the image and we need to scale this image down using the tool to scale. Now with this image, I know some dimensions in here. I haven't got any references, but I know that going from across here, so I've clicked once and then clicked again, those two edges, that this is 38 millimeters. We select the image plane and then hit okay. This is now to scale. So I zoom in, I can use the ruler just to check, just to get a rough scale from here to here. We can see that's 38 millimeters. To kind of rename this image plane so we can keep track of what we're doing. Before we tackle any of the other images, we're going to learn how to trace this image using a sketch, part design workflow, and something called a polar pattern. This means that we only need to trace one of these features to allow us to copy it to all of these. So one feature for the four features. Let's come over to the part design workbench and start creating our new sketch. Now we're in the part design workbench, we can follow the tasks to guide us through the workflow, or we could use the toolbar up the top. So first of all, we need a new body. So I'm going to click on tasks and create body. And then it will guide us to create a sketch. We're looking down in the object. So you can see we've got the XY plane here. So we click the XY plane and hit OK. This throws us into a sketcher. To allow us to use a polar pattern, we really need to be centered because polar means a circle. So we need to be in the center of this object before we start sketching. To do that, I'm going to move the image behind this sketch into position. So we click on the model, click on the top plane image, come down to the placement. Let's just span this out so we can see what we're doing. Come down to the position and we've got the X, Y and Z. Now, word of advice, use the X, Y and Z from the handler or from a navigation cube. Don't use the red and the green lines because these are associated with the sketch. So this is the X, this is the Y, and the Z is always normal to the sketch pointing towards you. And that means that's exactly the same on each plane. We need to use the global coordinate system here so we can see Y, X and Z. So I need to move this along the Y and we can just use the up and down arrow keys or type in 
a number in here, minus down, plus up. So you can see it's got minus three and we've moved that down. And that is basically, I would say, in position. We've just got to adjust the X. And I'm going to put a 0.5 on there. Change that to 0 0.5. So we should be positioned correctly now. I'm going to start sketching part of this object. Now to use a polar pattern, I need to just sketch this part here and part of this. First of all, I'm going to show you how a polar pattern works. If I created, say, a shape in here using some lines, so we'll connect the lines up to the quarter of this circle. So two lines here and an arc. We use the endpoint and endpoint arc. Connecting up these points and creating a curve. And what we'll do is we'll bring this into the center and attach it to there with a Quinson constraint. Then we've got basically a section here. Now I've got a point on line constraint which I'm not happy there, so I'm going to delete that and just put a vertical constraint because I want to show you what happens when we start to move this. So vertical constraint along there. So those are constrained. If I come over and hit close and hide the top plane, so that image is gone, we can pad this sketch by using the pad tools and we'll give it a 10 millimeter pad. So we've got this section here. What we can then do is click on the pad and then come up to the part design and apply a pattern. And you'll notice we've got polar pattern there. It's also available on the toolbar with the same icon. When we click that, we see we get some transformation problems, but this feature is being mirrored over to the left hand side. On the left hand side, you'll see we have an axis here. And also we have the occurrences, which at the moment is two. Let's increase this to four. You can see how this has been increased. They do not touch at the moment, this one. Increase it once more, and they have connected. The axis that this is on is normal to sketch. That means it's facing away from the sketch. So we sketch this part here with a sketch that's sitting on the top plane, the normal sketch axis will be the axis that's pointing towards us. And this is the one we've chosen here. We can change this to vertical sketch axis and you can see what's happened there. And again to horizontal sketch axis. And then we can use the base X, the base Y and the base Z. So that's will be these axes here going along there. You can see because we've got four evenly placed sections that this creates a full circle. And this is the technique we're going to be using for sketching those features in our sketch. Because if we go back to our sketch, let's just delete that polar pattern by clicking on it and pressing the delete key. And also delete the pad as well. If we go back to the sketch and bring in the top plane, then it would be no point in sketching these individually because we'd be just wasting our time. Now the thing to remember is that though we've created a section here, these features aren't within this slice. So we need to figure out how we're going to deal with this. We still want the four sections and the easiest way to do that is let's take these horizontal constraints off. Horizontal and vertical is that we can just bring this around this way and make sure that the angle between these using the angle, strain and angle, is 90 degrees. So we've got a 90 degree angle that allows us to do the 360. So we can look to see on this feature we'll slice it through here and here and just build this section and then repeat this around so we've got four sections going around here.
So what I've done is just delete that sketch out of that body. Go into the body and create the sketch along the XY plane and hit OK. We need to position our object, the top plane, into the correct position. So I'm going to come in and nudge the X into position around about 0.5. And the Y using the up and down arrow keys to just to get itself into position. So minus three. So we're there now. We need to sketch this. So we're going to divide this into a number of segments. So four segments allowing us just to sketch this top one and repeat it around the four segments. First of all, we need to create a 90 degree segment. So it fits nicely around our 360 degrees of circle. For that, we're going to use a line and come down and connect to that point and then come across with another line click and over here somewhere hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and change both these lines to construction geometry and we'll set an angle between these two with an angle constraint of 90 degrees those are in position let's make those two equal as well so quality against those and we'll come in and I'm going to place this point where this arc starts. So where this arc starts, I'm going to place it along there. Now we need some arcs to follow this line around. So I'm going to come in and use the center and end point arc. Hover over the center point because I've got the auto constraints on. Click, come up, hover over this point. See we've got coincidence constraint and we'll bring the arc all the way around and connect. We've got over constraints there, so let's have a look, see what we've got. We've got redundant constraint, which is number four, which is this equality. And we'll hit delete on that because we've got that arc connecting up those two. I'm gonna create another arc now. Center, and come out and use the inner arc there and connect up. So those are connected. Let's add a line between these. So this line to this, this one, so point on point constraint or coincident constraint and we'll do the same over here as well so we've got our first section in here we need to set some radius so we set the radius of the outside matter of fact let's just set the radius so we've got the radius and just click that's 17 hit enter we still got that tool enabled so we'll select the inner one and set that to 15 so those are in there, we need to come in and just position this point about where this feature starts here. We can then set the angle between this line and this line of 15 degrees. And that is all set there. Hit escape, get the mouse pointer back and we can start sketching this feature. To do that, I'm going to use the number of arcs and symmetry. So let's use our endpoint and rim point arc, and we're going to connect up point on point or coincident constraint to here and make our first arc and bring this in. Let's make our second arc and then make our next one. And we'll come right the way across and make that arc there. Two more and connect up to this line and make that curvature. So we've got all of these here, point on line constraint, hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and we can start, just bring these in and let's make a, between these two, a tangency constraint. Let's make that smooth, same with this one. Tangency constraint, okay. So those are nice and smooth now move those in you can see this one moves up and down well I don't want that one to move up and down so I'm going to click on there and find the center of that arc so I can see that center is there so I can take that point and this line and connect that up because that will keep that on that line and we'll place it just so it touches that edge and then restrict this one down to this point with a height constraint of eight millimeters. So that one's in there and we need 
actually to have that symmetrical, that's not, not symmetrical yet. So let's take these two points and this one and use a symmetry constraint. We will get over constrained because I've added this one in here, number 23. Let's click it and we can see that point online. We don't actually need that. We just need that some distance away from there. So you can see how the auto constraints kick in and remove any constraints that you made a mistake with or just to get that point in place so we can move forward. So now, well, I want to get this nicely positioned around about here. And let's take these two points. So these are the centers of the arc. So I'm going to use those and make them symmetrical to that one so you select one select the other and then select the last one you want to make it symmetrical to, to which is this line and we can start getting these into position so you can see how much easier this is to actually start molding this into position so using the centers of the arcs make sure there's nothing selected first select the two and select this line and make symmetrical constraint across there. And we can pull one out and decide where it's going to sit. Now there's many ways of constraining these and it may take some time. Well, we've got symmetry across here so we can start constraining these down to make this all green. We've got five degrees of freedom at the moment. So that's set the radius of these. So I'm going to take this one, set the radius 2.5, just it slightly, and set this one, radius of 2, and set the radius of this one as well. And this one is 10.75. It's slightly higher, but that's fine. So now we've got this, and you can see that we've got much more restricted down in and out movement basically with these, not up and down. I hit control Z just to get them back into position. We've got two degrees of freedom, let's click, and we can see that these points here and this, so that's locked down these two. 3.3, we We've got one degree of freedom now. So there's one thing that we need to sort, and I think it's just going to be this here. So this one and this one. And place the length in there of five millimeters. So that's all locked down. We can now start trimming some of this away. So I'm looking at the object. Well, we need some lines actually. So let's get some lines in here from here to here. And the same. Make sure it's got a vertical constraint. I'm going to place them symmetrical, so taking these two points and the center line, this one here, let's make sure that's selected, so these two points, let's take the bond points actually, so these two and this center line, this one here, and do symmetry. We're over constrained, number 35, so click number 35 and delete, and that's in symmetrical constraint there. And what I might do is actually just take this line and this point, so the center of that arc, and put a point on line constraint or point on object constraint. So now we're fully constrained, we need to trim this. So we need to remove this line here and these lines at the top. We may start to remove some of the constraints when we start trimming. So we have to be careful of that. So let's hit the trim tool and let's start trimming this line here. So trimmed, we can see that we're already lost constraints. If we escape and just move, say, this constraint, we can see what's happened. We no longer got a height restriction against this one. And you can see one degree of freedom. And these arcs here are the cause of the issue. Hit Control Z just to put that back into position. And make sure nothing's selected. And what I'm going to do is just select the center point and come down and select this center point and place a height in there of 18.54.
everything's gone green again and I'm going to carry on with the trimming. So the next one I'm going to trim is this one and then last of all this one. So we're fully constrained and we're all ready to go. Doesn't matter how you constrain this, you may have more constraints, less constraints in there. We've just got a fully constrained sketch and we're safe to use that. Let's hit close and click on the top plane and press the space bar and we've got our sketch ready to go. Now click on the sketch and select the pad tool and it is now starting to pad. One thing that you want to be wary of is that if you come into this sketch, if this is not fully constrained and say we had a break in this, for instance, let's put two lines in here like so. And what I'm going to do is just trim in the middle. So we've trimmed out that line there and we'll delete these two lines. So I've just split that in half. If this was just sitting over the top of here, then that looks like there's nothing wrong with this sketch. It looks like it's centered up, but it's not constrained. If I hit close and try to pad that now, it will disappear. It goes into error. You can see we compute fail down the bottom. We can find that problem by coming up to the sketch and validate sketch. But first we must select it, select sketch, sketch, validate sketch. And here we've got highlight troublesome vertices. If I click that. You can see in yellow, that's highlighted there. And you can see as we zoom in, they part. So we can just fix that. Let's go into the sketch and just control set that. And there we go, we've got it back. Let's close that and create our pad. I'm just going to go for the default of 10 millimeters. Hit OK. I'm now going to create a polar array with this. So I click on the pad, come up to the part design, come up to apply a pattern, and come down to polar pattern. It will say the transformation is not successful. We can see it's over here, and this is because it's disconnected from this body. Now remember the axis is in the middle, so it'd be rotating around the axis. And if we drop down, we can see what axis it is normal to sketch. As we said before, if you've got a sketch, the axis that is normal to sketch is the Z axis. So this Z axis here is not actually the axis of the sketch, it's the axis of the base Z, this one here. We can use either or normal to sketch or Z axis. That increases currents to three and now four. And we can see that's all connected up there. Hit OK, and we now have our feature. But you can see we've got these lines in here that's going across here. You may not want that because it creates extra faces. We can remove those by clicking on the polar pattern, come down to the refine on the data tab, and what this does, it just removes those redundant faces. So I click off now, I've set that to true, we've got one face and reduced faces going around the outside. And that's our feature completed. We'll now move on to understanding how we can create the rest of this object. We'll now take our part that's been created from the polar array and using a number of reference images, trace and create our finished model. And that will be available in the second video to this part and should be available on my channel in the next few days, if not available now. Please check the description for the playlist and you'll be able to find it there. Hope you're enjoying the series and hope to see you again in the next video. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.